Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kamisha Lucier, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. We're so glad to be a part of your walk with Jesus Christ, and we are glad to spend this time with you. Before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you and we love you and we praise you and we celebrate you. and We exalt your name, Jesus. Your name is above all names and above all things. And we just honor you and we declare that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Your tender mercies and your loving kindness do not fail. And we thank you, Lord, that you have been patient with us, that you have loved us tenderly and covered us with your blessing and your anointing. Father, I thank you for the listening in the almighty name of Jesus. I thank you that you are surrounding them with faith, hope, and love, and your word does not fail. I thank you, Lord, for clearing up any difficulties that they're having in their life, for strengthening them with your Holy Spirit in their inward man and quickening their physical body. I thank you, Lord, for their finances. I thank you, Lord, for their families. And I just plead the blood of Jesus over them in the almighty name of Jesus right now from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and all the way around inside and out, Lord, and their families and everything that pertains to them and them living the life that you have for them, Lord. We thank you for your word, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for causing the word to come alive to us and guiding us into all truth and showing us things to come. We bind the hand of the enemy right now in the almighty name of Jesus. We cancel and cast out every bit of deception, every lie, every untruth, and every false thing that would come to steal, kill, and destroy and hinder the people of God from moving forward. We release you, Holy Spirit, to bring truth. Your word is truth. And we thank you, Lord, and we release the ministering angels to minister on the behalf of the heirs of salvation. We bless your name, Jesus, and we thank you and receive all these things in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for being here again, darling. I'm so happy that you are walking this out with me and we can walk in this together and with you. We appreciate your time and your, you know, just the blessing that you are. We got to do what the Lord called us to do. And he first called us to walk together and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in every area and aspect of life and ministry. So we're going to do that and we're going to be obedient to the Lord and do his will above anything else. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Thank you, honey. So today we are going to pick up with part two of the end of time times conclusion so let's get back to our springboard scripture in revelation 10 verses 5 through 7 will you read that for us darling absolutely it says then the angel whom i saw standing on the sea and on the land lifted up his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things in it and the earth and the things in it and the sea and the things in it, that there will be delay no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, Mm -hmm. as he preached to his servants the prophets. Amen. Amen. So last episode, we covered that um, in verse six, where it says there should be delay no longer. That's a reference to time because mm-hmm. time is a delay to eternity to allow the opportunity for people to make their choice, whether they will be for God or they will be for the adversary and the Lord to also purify his heavenly community through this opportunity to make a choice. So he's able to divide the wheat from the chaff, if you will, the sheep from the goat. So um, today we're going to look at, um, let's see, Revelation 20. We're going to start here and we're going to connect some scriptures. And let's look at verse 11. My love, will you read that for us? Absolutely. It says, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence the earth and heaven fled away. And no place was found for them. Amen. Oh, actually, you can read verse 12 as well. Okay. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. And books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Okay. Amen. So after time is concluded, 
we know or we've we've heard of the the judgment, the great white throne judgment um, of of Christ, where He's going to judge all for what they've done and um, do that final separation. So if you go ahead and finish out reading um, the end of chapter 20, you'll see that. But we're going to also connect because we've already talked about um, in our springboard scriptures that he declared these things to the prophets and we looked at Isaiah. So we're going to look at um, a couple of other places and look at that, that theme being stretched or connected throughout the scriptures. Um, So let's go to Joel 3 verse 12 and I'll read verses 12 and 13 um actually verse 14 I'll read to 14 as well it says let the nations be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe Come, go down, for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And if you keep reading, it does talk about um, the sun and the moon growing dark and the stars being diminished. Um, also talking about in, um, the the judgment time, the great judgment. So uh, let's go from there to... We can go to Revelation. No, we just read Revelation 10, 7. We can go to Hebrews 9, verse 27 through 28. Sorry about that. I've got it if you'd like. Okay, thank you, honey. It says, And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes the judgment. So Christ, also having been offered once to bear the sin of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin, to those who eagerly await him. Amen. Amen to that. So again, there's that reference to um, the conclusion of time and that um, judgment that will happen. And then um, we'll be able to proceed with the next um, phase that God has in mind. So when we left off in the last episode, we had read Revelation 21 Mm-hmm. talking about um, the new heaven and the new earth. And we had gone through this before, but we were looking at it this time to see just how the Lord sees the end of all things or the end of time as we know it. We know that we are going to proceed in eternity and um, the the great separating that will happen at the great white throne judgment is to separate finally and permanently the people of God who will choose him in their, their life with, with their choice, they choose to serve him and those that choose in their life to serve the adversary. Now the gospel was preached to everyone. So they got the opportunity to choose Christ and Christ came at an appointed time based on God's clock so that it would be, Um, everyone would have the opportunity to make their choice and their decision. And again, the decision, whether or not it's been made, God is the only judge of that. He may share information with us or (laughs) Mm -hmm. give us, um, you know, um, insight, things like that. But he is the one that determines whether someone has made a decision for him or not. So let's go ahead and read verse 22, keeping in mind that God always tells us what he wants. He declares the end or the outcome before he gets started. He says, this is what I want to happen. And then he works towards that goal. So when we look at revelation, we can see exactly what's on God's heart and exactly what's on his mind and exactly what he desires the outcome to be and what it shall be because his word does not return to him void. You said verse 22 as from chapter 21 or just chapter 22? The whole of chapter 22. <clears throat> All right. Let's get <laughs> to <you>. it. <laughs> I just wanted to, wanted to be clear for my own understanding and for the listeners. So okay. Revelation 22 <clears throat> begins. Amen. Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of its street. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse, and the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, 
and his bondservants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will no longer be any night, and they will not have need of the light of a lamp, nor the light of the sun, because the Lord God will illumine them, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his bondservants the things which must soon take place. And behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who heeds the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And then I heard, and when I heard and saw, excuse me, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who heed the words of this book. Worship God. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong, and the one who is filthy still be filthy. And let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness, and the one who is holy still keep himself holy. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the immoral persons and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues which are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of God, uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. 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 So we say, come. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We say, come. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about in the previous episode that because we are skilled warriors of God and we're making our way from being bystanders, outsiders, um, spiritually immature to being the spiritually mature to being the Mm -hmm. warriors of god and to being those who are keenly and divinely focused on the will of our father you notice that as these things are happening the lord is speaking and what he is saying is unique absolutely it is very um you could say in the midst of this it's a still small voice it's even um it is strong but at the same time it's not the bulk of the activity or the things that we would find amazing but he's telling us exactly what he means and exactly what he wants Mm -hmm. so it's our business just like david's mighty men of valor the ones that were you know hearing overheard him sharing his heart and exactly. went and carried it out because they understood who their natural king was. So how much more we who understand who our eternal king is, our Lord and Savior is, our God is, listen when he speaks, especially as he's speaking in this manner, telling us exactly what is going to happen, what it's supposed to look like and not supposed to as though he's trying for it. This is what it's going to look like Mm -hmm. and what it's going to be and receiving and understanding the admonishment that he gives here, but also the, um, 
finality of it, the fullness and the um, this will not be changed or altered. Absolutely. So there's this awesome thing that happens here, because right? when we're looking at both chapters 21 and 22, mm-hmm. he's speaking a, a lot in chapter 21 about future things, the things that will take place. And, and actually, he begins chapter 22 still talking about those things. Mm-hmm. But then right as he ends verse 5 and begins verse 6, there's a, a switchback to this is what eternity is going to look like and be mm-hmm. to while those things are there for all eternity, if time will conclude as we've been talking about mm-hmm. and we will come out of time and back into eternity. Mm-hmm. There's still an acknowledgement of, I understand where you're at and you're still in time, which happens in verse six. And then there's all this, I mean, um, amazing We'll just go into instruction. I'll just call it instruction. Mm -hmm. There's still insight and revelation as to what's required. And even in in that message and in the, I'll say for the whole rest of the chapter, right? He's talking about what's happening in time. And he still comes down to make your choice for the Lord. I'll Mm -hmm. be your God and you'll be my Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But also this is the choosing ground. Make your choice, which Mm is, I mean, he tells how, hey, I'm coming quick. Again, he repeats this, right? Uh, I'm coming quickly. Behold, I'm coming quickly. And how he's already shown, he's already sent his angels to show these things, right? Mm -hmm. As we were uh, from our springboard scripture, these are the things that were prophesied to his servants, the prophets. Amen. Starting right? with Adam. It, all, all the, the way, way through. through because right. Because the testimony, uh, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. but then he gets to, you know, uh, some some Bibles will have it marked uh, starting in verse 10 with the, the final message as like an overall title. But what, it's interesting what he says in there. Don't seal up these words. And there are multiple places in the book of Revelation where it's like, no, no, don't write about this. Don't mm-hmm. don't share this with, with anyone. Like, you just keep this for you. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, you know, you can't Amen. discuss these things, Amen. right? But this part, he says, don't seal it up. Like, mm-hmm. make sure this is taught and this is proclaimed. And once he start getting into all the things about choices, mm-hmm. Right. He starts talking about the time is near. Like it's almost the end of time. Like time is ready to conclude Like we're soon. on the cusp of it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so back to the choosing ground, right? Mm-hmm. But then he gets into the choices that people are making. And this verse if 11? Uh, or... starting, yes, yeah, starting in verse 11, right? Like chapter 22. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. Mm-hmm. Let the one who's filthy still be filthy. Mm-hmm. But then let the righteous still be righteous. And let the mm-hmm. one who's holy still be holy or still keep himself holy. Amen. All right. It's a, whatever your choice is. Commit. Right. He's, he's, <laughs> he's saying, you're, you've made a choice. Your people are going to stay with what they have chosen. Mm-hmm. Now, the Lord is gracious, which mm-hmm. is why he, even in there, he's like, hey, verse, starting in verse 14, right? He, he again announces, well, from verse 12, he's like, again, hey, I'm coming quickly. And then he continues, like he tells to again who he is, who the Lord is, but then encourages and admonishes people in verse 14, blessed is he who washes their robes. In other words, practices righteousness and holiness, right? Be ye holy for I am holy. Amen. And yes, that's the old King James version, but... No, uh, that, that's good though. It, it says, if this is your choice, now carry it out. If you've chosen to say the name, the name right. of Jesus Christ, then wash your robes. Do the work that's required to confirm the choice that you've made. Exactly. And what you were referencing in verse 11, like, make your choice. Stick with it. It's the same thing we talked about when he spoke to the churches about the lukewarm. He said, mm-hmm. I wish you'd either be hot or cold. Pick you you one. tried to avoid making a choice. Uh-huh. And, and that doesn't work and you here. You tried right. to straddle the fence, but God has no pleasure in that. Exactly. He doesn't have pleasure in wickedness or one choosing to be wicked, but also you see he's not disturbed if someone does choose to be wicked and to perish. He's not 
He's not um, afraid of it. He's not mm-hmm. intimidated by it. That's not his best. No, and that's that's why he addresses that mm-hmm. in verse 15, right? Hey, these are the people that are going to be in my kingdom, right? And then and when he ends, right? Well, who will not be in my kingdom? He, uh, <laughs> when he gets to verse 15, he begins mm-hmm. with, these are the ones that aren't going to make it into my kingdom. That's right. They will not be allowed to re-enter the heavenly community. Mm-hmm. And, and that that's deep. And Amen. I mean, so that it's clear. It, exactly, it's, he makes it back to the river of life, right? Crystal clear. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. There's there's no guessing required. These things, anyone who loves and practices lying, and uh, all these different things, Amen. right? Amen. But the other ones, he says, hey, the ones that wash their robes, the ones that choose righteousness, that mm-hmm. choose holiness, as back in verse thirteen and fourteen. Mm-hmm they will have the right to the tree of life. Amen. And remember that tree of life in the garden represented two kingdoms. There it is. They will have the right to the kingdom of the Father, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of life, the kingdom of light. They so will have a right to They will that. have the right to re-enter the heavenly community. That's right. Amen. Amen. And and then there's the encouragement and admonishment. Hey, come. Come like he's... He's not pleading because the Lord doesn't plead. Mm-mm. He's inviting. He is inviting and mm-hmm. encouraging. Hey, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, come I'm on. Telling him you're welcome. Come to me, right? I'm not holding. I'm not. And, and not you me out. as in John or right, Kamisha. Absolutely. Come to the Lord. Right, come to right, Jesus. Right. He's He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He's the door. He's the gate. Right. He's the and only way. <laughs> that is it. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. The way. That's it. But he's all. He's saying in that. You're welcome. You are able to come freely should you choose to. It's, if that's what you desire, come on. If you're thirsty, mm-hmm. if you're hungry, if you desire him, come on. He's not going to refuse you or reject you. But he does make clear that it's the choice that the individual makes that will cause mm-hmm. them to reject God. That's them rejecting the Lord, not him rejecting. He's showing how, how um, open he is, but he does have his standard. Absolutely. He does have a standard. Now for us, you know, the Lord said that Abraham believed him and he accounted to him for righteousness. And then he told us to be holy because he is holy. So that means believe God and then start walking in what you know that he requires of you. Don't make excuses to not walk in it because he desires and requires that we do. Mm -hmm. He's not holding you accountable for something you don't know, but he's saying what you do know Walk in the light of that. Walk in the light and the understanding that you have and then continue to per- proceed with him and persevere so that he can continue the refining process in you. Amen. Amen. And there's also the, the warning, of course. Mm-hmm. We have to bring that up, right? It says, don't take anything away from this book. Don't add to mm-hmm. it, but don't take away from it. Mm-hmm. But then if, if we really consider that, right, it, the consequence of doing that it says, mm-hmm. um, if anyone adds to them, God will, sorry, yes, yes. If anyone adds to them, God will add to them the plagues which are written in the book. And if anyone takes away, they'll lose their part, right? Mm-hmm. You can look at that through our scripture because that's a choice. Mm-hmm. Those that, if you will, took away from the words the Lord had spoken, mm-hmm. did not adhere to them, right? And I don't want to just say the children of Israel in the wilderness, but every generation had to make that choice. Every individual. Every individual mm-hmm. and every generation had to mm-hmm. make that choice of what they were going to do. Were they going to choose to serve the Lord or were they going to choose, <clears throat> excuse me, to serve well the adversary, the mm-hmm. devil, Satan, mm-hmm. whether it's serve him like blatantly or serve him by trying to serve their own personal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. will or self-will. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right, so, so we have to recognize that. But then, what was the consequence? They were, well, not allowed to re-enter when their time on the choosing ground, the, this earth, mm-hmm. was done. But then, the ones that added to, I said, okay, we'll we'll serve the Lord, but we'll also serve these other things, right? Mm-hmm. That weren't God. Well, there were lots of plagues that happened, and not just the ten that were in Egypt. Amen. I mean, look at Leviticus 26 and look at Deuteronomy 28. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of those things, you can consider them as plagues. When when Absolutely. What does a plague do? It steals, it kills, it destroys. 
it robs from people. It, right? I mean, diminishes and decreases mm -hmm. them and their capacity and life around them and all the blessings and benefits. It literally robs from them. So you know, just getting an understanding, a fuller, more complete understanding of this isn't just about this one book. It's, it's the entirety of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But we right here are, I'll say, maturing and growing and developing into mm -hmm. God's warriors. Amen. Those that will do His will and put His will above everything else. Amen. To exclusively seek His will. Amen. Amen. So we are done with our map section, <laughs> <laughs> our history and our heritage. We are um, concluding that. Take the opportunity and um, go back and listen to any episodes that you, you want to hear again, that you still need um, the word to get down on the inside of you. And take this information and as you minister to other people, because I'm, I'm sure that's coming up in your life and you want to help lead others to Christ, you can keep it simple in how you minister mm -hmm. to them. You know, you're here on this earth to make a choice. Amen. Right? God loves you and he has already sent his son to die for for you, you know, the person that you're ministering to and let them know this is easy. You're here to make a choice for God or not. And it's as simple as that. And when you make that choice, then God will help walk you through keeping to that choice. If that's your desire, that'll help make your ministry um, with others or your um, evangelism. I think that may be a, a more clear word. <laughs> yes, it's probably a more recognizable term. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that'll make that easier for you and more simple. And um, give people... Oh, go ahead, honey. With the evangelism mm -hmm. and, and what you're saying, honey, honey, it is important for us to remember, let everything pass by before the Lord. Be listening to what He wants you to say and minister mm -hmm. to others. And that's across the board, whether it is someone that has not yet entered into a relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. or someone that's been in a relationship with the Lord for 70 years, Amen. right? It, we should be approaching this in everything we do the exact same way, listening for the voice of the Lord to say what he says to say Amen. and to do what he says to do. That's why it's written into the labs. And, you know, what is the Lord saying to you? What right? What is he wanting you to deal with? What is he ministering to you? Well, it's the same way that we should be approaching everything that we do. And we start off, have started off small, like, you know, hey, listen to the Lord when you go shopping. What is he telling you to get or to not get? And, you mm -hmm. know, you can ask him the why, or all these different things. But especially when it comes to ministering, this is all practice mm -hmm. to put it together, if you will, to mm -hmm. minister exactly like Jesus, saying what the Father says to say and doing what he says to do, being led by the Holy Spirit, because the the whole point and purpose is to minister to the people, their needs, mm -hmm. what each one needs individually. Amen. And only the Father knows what that is. Thank you so much for saying that, honey, and and clarifying that. Um, so Christ is the door, and mm -hmm. we're here to choose the Father or or not, and Jesus is the only way to the Father. So that'll help simplify your message and, again, also allow the Holy Spirit to minister easily to you because you're not concerned about trying to get everything else formulated just right. So we love you and we thank you for joining us for this episode and we are keeping you in prayer. God bless you and remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry inspiring messages and coupon codes for the merch shop visit our website adayofprayer.org click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form be sure to check the box that says subscribe